As you may remember, as the war with Russia enters its third year, major European military powers Germany and Poland declared recently that they would not be deploying troops to Ukraine. This was in response to allegations that certain Western nations were thinking of doing just that. Following the confirmation by other leaders of Central Europe that their countries will not be sending soldiers to Ukraine, the President of NATO also stated that the US-led military alliance has no intentions to send troops there. Meanwhile, the Kremlin issued a warning that if NATO deploys combat troops, there would inevitably be a direct confrontation between Russia and the alliance. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told reporters, In this case, we need to talk about the inevitability of conflict, not about probability. Moscow issued its warning the day after French President Emmanuel Macron, speaking at a conference attended by high-ranking representatives of more than 20 Western countries that support Ukraine, stated that the deployment of Western ground forces should not be ruled out in the future. On Wednesday, February 28, 2024, European Parliament in Strasbourg, Eastern France hosts a speech on security and defence by President Ursula von der Lion of the European Commission. In order to address the security threats posed by Russia's war on Ukraine, a senior EU official called on Wednesday for a new defence industry policy that prioritises the purchase of European-made weapons and ammunition. According to von der Leyen, European sovereignty is about taking responsibility ourselves for what is vital, and even existential, for us. On February 28, 2024, a press conference was held by Albanian Prime Minister Edi Rama and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Tirana, Albania, following the peace summit of southeastern European countries. Wednesday's conference, which the President of Ukraine and the Government of Albania are co-hosting, aims to persuade countries in southeast Europe to continue supporting Kyiv as symptoms of exhaustion mounts two years after Russia's full-scale invasion. Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, seems to see the events in Paris differently. There will be no ground troops, no soldiers on Ukrainian soil who are sent there by European states or NATO states. He said that participants had decided. Soldiers operating in our countries also are not actively participating in the war themselves. According to Scholz, there was also a general agreement. Following intense criticism from French opposition MPs over Macron's proposal that ground forces could be considered, the French president's administration attempted to elucidate his remarks on Tuesday as Macron appeared to be growing more and more alone. At the summit, there was debate but no agreement, according to French Defence Minister Sebastien Lecornu, on conducting military training and demoning activities in Ukraine away from the front lines. The minister clarified, it's not sending troops to wage war against Russia. But first, in order to help YouTube understand your preferences and allow you to receive new video updates whenever they are released on this channel, if you're enjoying this content, please consider supporting it by clicking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you. Now, let's move forward. It has been forbidden to send soldiers, especially as NATO tries to keep itself out of a larger conflict with Russia, which possesses nuclear weapons. There is nothing stopping any of the 31 NATO countries from participating individually or in groups in such an endeavour. The alliance as a whole would only do so with their consent. The Associated Press was informed by NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg that NATO allies are providing unprecedented support to Ukraine. Since 2014 we have taken action in response to the full-scale invasion. However, there are no intentions to place combat forces from NATO in Ukraine. Prime Minister Donald Tusk of Poland stated, Poland does not plan to send its troops to Ukraine, while Prime Minister Peter Fiala of the Czech Republic emphasized that his nation certainly doesn't want to send its soldiers during a meeting on Tuesday in Prague. The Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico, stated that while his government does not intend to suggest a deployment, several nations were considering making bilateral agreements to supply troops to assist Ukraine in repelling the Russian invasion. Fico did not specify which nations will send soldiers to Ukraine or what their objectives would be there. Macron refrained from mentioning any nations as well, stating that he wished to preserve strategic ambiguity and prevent the West from siding with Russia. 
NATO as an organization only offers non-lethal assistance and support to Ukraine, such as medical supplies, uniforms and winter gear. Nonetheless, certain countries unilaterally or jointly transfer arms and ammunition. The kind of transportation and logistical capacity that only nations like the United States, United Kingdom, France, Germany and maybe Italy, Poland or Spain could marshal would be necessary for the choice to send soldiers and keep them deployed for an extended period of time. Soltenberg told the AP that this is a war of aggression by Russia against Ukraine, blatantly violating international law, even if he disapproved of NATO military action. Naturally, Ukraine has the right to self-defense under international law, and we have the right to assist them in defending that right. The Paris summit came right after those in France, Germany, and the United Kingdom, each inked bilateral security agreements lasting 10 years with Ukraine, while the latter's leadership tries to bolster backing from the West. European countries fear that if Congress continues to block help to Ukraine, the United States may withdraw its support. Additionally, they fear that Donald Trump, the former president, may retake office and alter American policy on the continent. According to those present at the meeting, a number of European nations, notably France, announced their support on Monday for the Czech Republic's request to purchase ammunition shells for Ukraine outside of the EU. According to Macron, a brand new alliance will be formed to supply medium and long-range missiles. During a recent interview, Soltenberg has no objection to Ukraine using Western weapons to attack Russian targets. Some nations have imposed limitations on the usage of the equipment they donate, requesting that it only be utilized within Ukraine. It is up to each and every ally to determine whether their delivery is subject to any limitations, Stoltenberg stated in an interview with Radio Free Europe. However, he added, hitting legitimate military targets, Russian military targets, outside Ukraine, is also part of Ukraine's right to self-defense. The Kremlin has responded to Macron's comments by threatening to start a fight if the West places troops in Ukraine. As the Kremlin warned that sending ground troops to Ukraine would be a significant escalation and lead to direct warfare between Russia and the Western Security Alliance, Germany, Poland and NATO have decided against doing so. The remarks made on Tuesday come the day after French President Emmanuel Macron brought up the possibility of strengthening assistance for Ukraine in its conflict with Russia at a gathering of European leaders. Participants in the Paris summit, according to German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, considered the issue but came to the conclusion that there will be no ground troops, no soldiers on Ukrainian soil were sent there by European states or NATO states. That soldiers operating in our countries also are not actively participating in the war themselves, according to Scholz, was another widely held belief. Two of Kyiv's biggest allies, Czech Prime Minister Petr Fiala and Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk, announced that they too were not considering sending soldiers. Additionally, although alliance countries have given Ukraine unprecedented support, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg stated to the Associated Press news agency that there are no plans for NATO combat troops on the ground in Ukraine. It has been forbidden to send soldiers, especially as NATO tries to keep itself out of a larger conflict with Russia, which possesses nuclear weapons. There is nothing stopping NATO nations from participating in this kind of project alone or in groups, but the organization wouldn't act unless all 31 members gave their approval. An anomaly, despite the fact that most of the West is still unaware of this. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.